First of all, yes, yeah, some people are talking about Delta and Delta Plus. So what's going on with uh, coronavirus in Japan this week? Well, first thing is, of course, um, it is funny in Japan, although, you know, for, for obvious political correctness and sensitivity reasons, we're being encouraged, just like with the, the Wuhan virus, we were corrected to, you know, switching over to the coronavirus um, and then to COVID-19, uh, again, probably out of fear of hurting the, the feelings of other coronaviruses, um, you know, in Japan, they've always been a bit slow, where even though there's COVID-19 in English media, Japanese media just stuck with uh, coronavirus. That's that's just what it caught on. Um, and similarly, although we have like the um, Delta variant, um, uh, obviously the, the Indian variant and people calling them the Indian variant, the Brazilian variant, the English or the British variant. Um, you know, and again, there were, there were sort of sensitivities about that, not wanting to beat up on India. You know, obviously, we're tr trying to get everyone to switch over to India, uh, to Delta variant. But um, yeah, yeah, in Japan, they still say Delta variant, which means in it's from India. You know, they always put it in the parentheses in the news. So I don't know if they're really helping with that. Not that I think that's it's too, causing too much of a problem yet. Um, the fact that... Um, <laughs> the fact that Delta Plus has happened, yeah, I mean, like I say, I remember getting upgraded on Delta and I can't help but hear Delta Plus and just think, wow, that sounds nice. Uh, no, that doesn't sound nice. How? I, I, I must say, out of all of them, I mean, Corona's a pretty decent beer as well, so I must admit, uh, who knows? I mean, once this is all done, I could, I could be flying back to America. I, I might just have a Corona beer to celebrate on my Delta flight to Seattle, next flight that I take over there. Who knows? Um, but anyway, that's happening. Delta, definitely the numbers are going up and it clearly is more contagious. Interesting, however, that the, in Tokyo, the numbers of people over 65 who are about nearly 50% vaccinated, it's about 40% of the people over 65 are vaccinated now, something like that. Um, they are uh, The numbers of new cases involving people in those highly vaccinated groups are coming down, which shows that it's effective. There again, of course, in Israel, where everyone is pretty much vaccinated, um, at least inside Israel proper. Um, and they, uh, you know, with the Pfizer, with the same mRNA vaccines that they're planning to use in Japan or are using in Japan, uh, of course, the Delta variants are present there and they are actually causing lots of new cases, even in a highly vaccinated country. And people are going back to requiring masks. I get a feeling Japan is just going to stick with masks. Um, Japan already had a, a custom of using masks in the first place. So um, I, the idea that everyone's itching to get rid of them, I think they're going to stay, stay, particularly in big cities, for a while after this. But um, yeah, it's scary. Uh, and clearly, um, we are going to get another wave. I mean, this is the other thing. Numbers in Tokyo, in fact, I don't think I have a graph with the numbers of Tokyo, only the vaccinations. But um, the, like I said, there are numbers 1.2. It's a hundred, week over week cases are going up by 120% over the same day of the previous week at the moment, which is equating to around 120 cases it's now going from like um yeah it's basically jumping uh 450 to 550 560 so the numbers are going up again alarmingly we've only been out of the state of emergency in tokyo for like a week not that it's really much of a state of emergency but um yeah yeah they're going to put them back there are no restrictions on japanese people says christopher Liu. kind of there's no restrictions there's no requirements to stay at home or uh no bans on going out although that's discouraged it's mostly restrictions on Japanese businesses, for example, particularly um, so many cases are linked to alcohol consumption. And so, you know, bars, izakaya, places like that are told that they can't serve alcohol after 7 p.m., which, you know, typically people uh, who drink do it on the way home from work after work at 7. So if everything's closed at 7, the idea is to discourage people going out. Um, of course, some people poking fun that it's not like you can't catch coronavirus or you can't, you know, somehow drinking during the day is any less risky a behavior than drinking in the evening. But, you know, the idea is it's trying to softly modify behavior without banning, without doing things like in Paris where people are banned from going out like like a kind of you know, actual lockdown uh, and people have to explain why they're out. They're, they're more shutting down the places that people go to that involve the most likely to produce clusters. That said, of course, people like kids are going to schools, people are going to work and there are clusters at works gyms um you know schools and none of those are shut down so yeah you, you're basically right there uh christopher luke um and this is where even those kind of soft restrictions have been kind of eased uh, like within a week of them being eased the numbers in tokyo are just shooting up again so already they're talking about what well, we're probably going to be back in another state of emergency maybe within the next week depending on the number of serious cases and the hospital bed situation which is uh actually because elderly are not catching it so much is not going up 
too badly, although there's also always a bit of a delay from when the numbers go up to when the serious cases come up, since most cases tend to get serious about a week or two after the numbers come out. So this is kind of funny, very different to Australia. Japan doesn't freak out at the idea of there being a case, uh, but they will freak out if there are so many serious cases that the hospitals can't cope, and then they'll put in some pretty soft restrictions, but that's how it's been working. Uh, that said, um, like I said, the, the really, really Japan's kind of given up on trying to control by lockdown. They've been doing these kind of trying, trying to turn the knob to try to control the, 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 the amount of the spikes uh, when the waves have been coming in. But really, right now, they're fully invested in uh, vaccinating. And interesting to see, I think I showed last week how Japan was sort of had this very, very spiking sort of a graph. Um, and right now, it's just jumped ahead of Germany, Italy, France, uh, you know, um, I don't know why Europe would be there. Oh, this is uh, oh, per 100 people. So that's across all of Europe. So this is actually uh, against the population. This is not raw numbers. This is against the population. So also consider the fact that Japan is now issuing more vaccines um, per day or per seven day average uh, per 100 people in the population than Germany. And of course, Japan has like three times the population, I think, of Germany. Maybe it's double. I don't know. What is Germany? It's like 40 million, 50 million. But anyway, Tokyo, you know, Japan, 120 million people, and uh, the number's still going like this. Canada, by the way, is apparently still way, way above. But um, yeah, it shows that Japan started late. Um, if you take the surface area of that line, you know, it shows that Japan still hasn't covered as much as these other countries that have been doing this better for a longer time. But certainly they got their act together. And, um, you know, this is where now... Um, it does look very achievable that everyone's going to get their shots by October. So that's good news. And of course, the other thing is that, again, where a lot of people on Twitter were scoffing at the idea when Suga said that they were going to get up to a million shots per day. Um, that was achieved uh, earlier this week relatively easily and before the corporate vaccination started, um, which really, to me, given the number of companies that signed up to give their employees vaccinations, um, it really looks like Japan's going to probably pretty easily get up to like 2 million shots per day uh, pretty soon, which again makes the getting the whole country done by November target, at least every, everyone who wants to do it, uh, pretty achievable. Um, so in that light, um, I guess what's going to be really interesting is to see how far it goes, because this is the other thing right now. There isn't a lot of talk about herd immunity or uh, getting the whole country to 70%, like there is in America and so on. I mean, America is further along at this, but it will be interesting to see how just pu based on pure um, availability and everyone who wants to get it, getting it, uh, how far that will go. Uh, again, I don't. people talk about vaccine hesitancy, um, and there are a lot of people, just the culture here is just a very cautious culture, and there's a lot of people who talk ca cautiously about it, but also peer, po peer pressure is a thing. Um, and we'll see. We'll see uh, actually how many people go and actually allow themselves to to, to go get the shot uh, for themselves and their families and where we end up come November. But right now, yeah, there's a lot of momentum and I'm certainly um, going to go and get mine. So that's that's a good thing. Um, yeah, the uh, the other thing that's happening, I think I mentioned last week that Japan was developing a paper based uh, vaccine passport system which it is also planning to create a digital version of, and now they're reaching out to countries in Europe and other countries uh, which are developing similar systems to uh, set up re reciprocity, basically to allow travel, to the idea of having uh, Japanese being able to have a uh, proof of uh, having received their vaccines, which is recorded and validated by the Japanese government that can be used in compatible digital passport systems with other countries, basically to reopen travel and trade and whatnot. And uh, I think this makes sense, uh, you know, as a, as a way to track that. Uh, again, I, I'm generally for, I know, I know there's some controversy with vaccine passports, but uh, I, again, uh, lots of countries require vaccines uh, in order to enter them for other types of vaccines. And I'm, uh, I'm satisfied that the, the vaccines that we're using here are safe. The, the Japanese government, among the issues that the Japanese government is trying to work out, of, for example, with countries like Indonesia, that are primarily using the Sinovac uh, vaccine from China, which Japan doesn't recognize. There's a question, is Japan going to recognize vaccine passports for vaccines that it doesn't approve? Um, they're going to have to sort that one out pretty fast, because again, with countries like Indonesia, um, there's a lot of exchange. Uh, and with China, there's a lot of exchange. Um, so they'll have to sort out a lot of the details and indeed check if, if there's going to be reciprocity. But if this opens the path to uh, travel, uh, safe travel, um, 
and knowing that you're not going to be stuck on an airplane where 30% of the people are unvaccinated. Um, not that, of course, vaccines are 100% protection, but if you're going to allow it, you know, again, you'd rather have your chances. Particularly in the US, I saw some data that, like, uh, apparently among the deaths in the US, like 99% of the people who die of uh, coronavirus are unvaccinated in the US. So, you know, clearly the benefits of being vaccinated as opposed to not being vaccinated are clear, at least vis a vis the, the virus and in terms of immigration safety. That said, it's a requirement right now that most of the uh, athletes coming in for the Olympics are all getting, well, not a requirement, but nearly all of them are vaccinated first. First. And yet already, um, the Ugandan, uh, the first team that arrived, the Ugandan team had two members that tested positive, even though they had both been vaccinated. I had the AstraZeneca um, shot just before arriving. Then you've had the French team, they had some cases. The Sri Lankan team had some cases. So already people are arriving, athletes or teams are arriving in Japan and they're proving positive. Uh, even with vaccination. So, um, you know, it's not, not foolproof at all. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if this is a way to allow faster reopening that would be possible without this, you know, even when countries are still trying to tidy it up. Um.